with all of you. My name is Pastor Amy Chalupnik, and we are worshiping at Trinity Lutheran Church on this glorious Easter morning. We gather together in spirit, and I'm thankful that we can do it in this way. So please, sing out on the hymns. There's some good old ones, and, uh, and join in the readings as well in the gold print. There are some announcements in your bulletin, and I will touch upon those later. Again, welcome to worship. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed.
together, let us pray and bring ourselves before God. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 118 responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open before me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. There was a 
great earthquake, where the angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and with great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come on up, kids. Come on up. Yep, yeah, get a little closer. This message is just for you. And I brought my props, like you know I have every week. resurrection. 
resurrection story. Right from my heart. Let's pray. You can repeat after me if you feel comfortable. Dear Jesus, Thank you for showing us how to live, how to be, and for giving us the strength that you had to face all that you did, even when it was hard. And thank you for the gift of life. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Thanks, kids. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your spots. Grace and peace to you this happy Easter morning. By the miracle that is technology, we are together this morning to celebrate the greatest miracle of all time. The resurrection of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the grave could not hold him. Death could not hold him. And because of his death and resurrection, death can't hold us either. Now many of you have heard me proclaim that the wonder and joy of Easter cannot be contained in just one day. I mean, how can it? Many of you have heard me proclaim that each Sunday is a little Easter. That each and every Sunday we worship, we are celebrating Easter Sunday. The day that Jesus was raised. The day that God showed us the promise that is the resurrection life. It reminds me of a little second grader who pulled me aside once and said, Pastor Amy, I don't get God. God doesn't do things in order. Now, I have one of those. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what does this pastor say to those moments? I love kids. They'll say anything. But before I could come up with an answer, he says, Jesus just doesn't do show and tell. Jesus tells and then he shows. I thought, wow, Brennan, Jesus is different. God is different. God does not do things in the human way. God told all of us over and over how much we are loved and cherished. God told us over and over how the abundant life is promised for each and every one of us, life in and with God. And then God showed us by rising on the third day. God showed us what life with God is, sometimes wonderful, sometimes horrible. But life with God always ends well. Because the end, and I probably should put those in air quotes, the end with God is just a more wonderful beginning. Now, we have just gone through 40 days of Lent, and even a second grader, if he or she counts the actual days since we were marked by the cross of Christ on the Ash Wednesday, right? Even a second grader knows that six and a half weeks cannot possibly equal 40 days. Unless, of course, you don't count. And Christians don't, because every Sunday is a little Easter. Now, some of you have heard me say that we are living a true Lent this year. A Lent like none other. Wouldn't you agree? A Lent like none other. A Lent, strangely enough, has pulled us apart, physically apart, from one another. But perhaps when we look back on it, we will say, drew us closer together. What did we give up this year? What did we give up this Lent? What did you? Ask yourself. I bet we could make a long list. Our Wednesday night suppers. Our Wednesday night dramas. Our family vacations. Our face-to-face -face connections. 
connections with our friends, our sense of security, our financial stability. Some lost jobs, some lost clients, our senior prom, our regular food sources, our going to school. I know, we miss it. Strange as that is, our, some of us lost loved ones, and some of us still will. So I ask you, what have you gained? Think about that a little this week. What have you gained? And what is God doing in the midst of all of this? Now some of you have heard me say that when this is all over, when this is in the rear view, we can finally physically gather here safely in this worship space, more than just one or two or three, then we will have a second Easter. Like a hobbit, we will have Easter and second Easter, breakfast and second breakfast, and maybe 11 teas. We'll come up with something for 11 teas. That sounds a fun word. I could work with that. That sounds like a party word. And we will. And yes, we will have a second Easter, and we will bring up the old garden tomb scene from the basement that we found. And we will set it up, and we will decorate this worship space with flowers. And we will have a second Easter, and we will roll away the stone. The stone of death, the stone of fear, the stone of isolation. Why? Because I am confident that just like death could not hold Jesus, not hold Jesus forever, this virus will not hold us forever. The one, the one and only thing that holds us forever is the loving hand of God. Now God's hands do more than just hold us. I've experienced that in my own life and maybe you have too. Scripture tells us that God's hands are active and working and rolling the stone away. Did you catch that in the Gospel reading? It was literally and figuratively dark as the women arose that Sunday morning. The two got up, they put on their garments, they grabbed their spices, and they headed to that tomb. The Lord and Savior that had died would deserve a proper burial after all, despite the risks. And so they went out. They took all the precautions. They didn't go out later in the day. They headed out early, and they didn't stay long. And as the sun began to arise, I'm sure that path was lined with dark shadows, long shadows. But no shadow could compare to the shadow of grief. It was on their hearts. It's not hard to imagine that the thoughts and sights of that last week flashed through their minds. Those two Marys had been there when Jesus rode on that donkey. Before thousands shouting his praises, what an incredible moment that was. Did the world finally see Jesus for who he was? God in the flesh, the savior of the people, the king. Try as they might, I'm sure they could not block out those other thoughts also. Those terrible scenes from playing over and over and over in their minds. Isn't that human nature? That the negative always seems a little louder? Like the daily headlines that start by giving us what? The number of new cases. The number of new deaths. Click. I've been watching a lot of National Geographic later, lately. The news is just too graphic. Jesus tied to a post, whips and sharp pieces of metal, glass on straps ripping through his back. I'm sure they shuddered when they thought of that purple robe, the beatings, the cruel mockings, the crown of thorns. They had seen it all. They had seen Jesus, their teacher, their friend, their Lord. They had witnessed everything that Jesus had gone through. And these two women, the two Marys, were where? At the cross. They had seen Jesus hanging on a cross of wood. They saw his breathing labored and his body wince with pain. And they were there 
And Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And they saw his head fall as he says, It is finished. They were there when Jesus died. And when he died, I'm sure a part of them died too. For so many had hopes and joys. And on that cross, on that dark Friday 2,000 years ago, Yet here they are, here they are, early on a Sunday morning, and here we are, early on a Sunday morning. They were ready to clean up that body of Jesus, to remove the blood and dust, and to stitch up his side. Stitch up his side. <laughs> Having moments like this myself a lot lately, I wonder if, how long it took them, when they were nearing the tomb, when suddenly it occurred to them that they had actually forgotten something, something to pry open that tomb. I wonder if they thought, great, now what? Who's going to do it? Do we have to turn back? Will the guards help us? Who can I call? They didn't have a Steve Torbett to bring them their keys. They didn't have a Mark Jacobson to bring them a white robe. But they arrived. And the stone is already rolled away. An angel of the Lord has rolled back that stone. Verse 2. What's that on it? Was it rolled away for the guards? Doubtful. They would have been in trouble. Was it rolled away because of the earthquake? No, if you read closely. The close reading says the earthquake was caused by the Lord rolling back the stone. That's a big stone, much bigger than the stone I have here. It's a big stone to cause an earthquake. Was it rolled away for Jesus? No, because he was already gone. It was rolled away for the women. It was rolled away for the women because by the Lord God,
the resurrection of life through Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pause in prayer to the one who says, where two or three are gathered, he is in our midst. Because we are uplifted by the hope and the promise of the resurrection. O oh God, your creation praises you. The earth comes to life with new life through the running of the trees and the growth from the ground. O oh God, help us to protect your creation that others may experience your life through its beauty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the countries of the world are currently experiencing difficulty. We have set our minds on fear, and we worry about the spread of disease. O oh God, we lift up our leaders, be they local, state, national, or world leaders, that you may guide them to make good decisions in the fight against COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. O oh God, we still weep with those who weep, and we mourn with those who mourn. Although today is a day of rejoicing, we know that some are not able to do so. Cradle them, those that are fearful, those that suffer, those that are dying. Assure them of your loving presence and your power and your resurrection life. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Oh God, there are many on our own prayer list, persons that we know and love that are struggling. We lift them to you, whatever they face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. O oh God, you went ahead of us to show us the way. Help us be good stewards. Help us be good witnesses. Help us believe in all that you have taught us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we receive our morning's offering, and I thank you for faithfully supporting your church through your gifts. And thank you to Amy for consistently playing for our worship services, and for the musical offering that she brings today. Christ the Lord is risen today.